Hey guys, today we are going to be talking about how to enable a Sonos 5 speaker to accept Bluetooth connection. So if you are interested in that, let's stay tuned. Now, as you guys know, a lot of Sonos products, they actually do not operate via Bluetooth. Now, Sonos has launched the Sonos Move and the Sonos Roam, and uh, both are actually capable of connecting via Bluetooth. So if you are using a phone and you just want to connect via Bluetooth to those speakers, yes, you can do that. But what about the older speakers like the Sonos One or the Sonos 5? Now, they won't be able to accept those kind of inputs. But the one advantage that the Sonos 5 has is that it has an input jack that will take a 3.5 millimeters input. Now, um, it's going to be hard to see, but basically, let's see if you know your speakers well enough. The Sonos 5, they do have a 3.5 millimeter input jack. So if you wanted to use that 3.5 millimeter input jack to actually accept a Bluetooth receiver, what can you use? And that is actually the topic that we are talking about today. So what I have in my hands here is a Wii M Mini. All right, I don't know whether you're supposed to say W I I M Mini or Wim Mini, whatever it is. I actually found that this was a very popular device on Amazon. So I will provide the affiliate link down below. If this is something that you want to consider buying, you can buy through the affiliate link. It will earn me a small commission and you're not going to be paying anything more. Now, what this device does, all right, and uh, after a few software and firmware updates, the company has actually improved it uh, significantly over months. Now, I received this device uh, quite a while back, but I never thought to do a, a video about it. But now, it has actually enabled a transceiver function. So not only can you receive act as a Bluetooth receiver, it can also transmit Bluetooth signals to another pair of the Wim Mini. So it acts together. Now, what this does is Actually, if you have a speaker that is dumb or if you have a set of receiver or amplifier, you can actually use this to enable smart uh, functionalities into that old traditional setup. Now, it has a couple of inputs. I'm going to switch over so that you can take a closer look. So what you have here, this is the device. There's a play pause button right here and there's a plus minus sign for volume control. Now, at the back, you will see a USB-C port. And this USB-C port is capable of receiving power. It is not for connecting a device, right? There's an um, optical digital input here as well. And over here, there are two ports, right? And those are 3.5 mm ports. One is an auxiliary input and the other is an auxiliary output. So how we are using this device today is that we are going to be connecting it to the Sonos 5. The Sonos 5 has an auxiliary input. And so we are connecting via the provided cable from the auxiliary output into the Sonos. Now, this comes with an app, right? So if you launch this app, if I'm going to be showing you right here, it will actually detect that you have a new device that is not set up. So this is the Wim Mini 9858, okay? So when you click on this, it says setup, okay? It will go about preparing it. And once that is done, you can see which Wi-Fi you are going to connect to. You're supposed to enter the password, okay? So once you enter the password, it will connect this device to your Wi-Fi network. So it is not just a Bluetooth device, it is also a smart device that is capable of streaming directly from a couple of um, uh, streaming services and which is all listed in the box right here below, right? So Spotify is there, Deezer is there, Tidal is there, all right? And oh, you heard the chime, right? The chime is actually coming from the Sonos 5 itself. Now, there are a couple of things that you need to do on the Sonos 5 in order to receive the input, which I'll step through in just a little bit, all right? But uh, now the device is connected to the wireless audio file successfully. So this is all that is done, right? There is a device update. So this is the firmware. Now, this company has been really diligent about updating their firmware 
And uh, throughout the couple of months that I have been in touch with them, they have always informed me when there's a new firmware update. So while on its own, it is actually capable of uh, performing its duty as a smart device, meaning to say you can control Spotify, you can control any of the streaming services from your mobile. It is not actually receiving the sound from your sound uh, from your phone itself. It is actually capable of connecting to the Wi-Fi at home and actually pulling the streams directly from those streaming services. So if you have a smart speaker like the Sonos 5, then technically you don't need that because the Sonos 5 on its own will be able to pull those streams down and play directly. But what will be useful is actually if you have an old system that doesn't have the smart device, uh, doesn't have the smart functionality, then you can use this particular device here to actually pull those stream and bring your device, bring your old setup up to date with streaming services. Now, this device is also capable of being paired in stereo. So if you have two of these and one of these is connecting to a Sonos mice and the other is connected to another Sonos mice, you can actually play them together as a stereo pair. And of course, it also means that that will enable multi-room functionality. And everything is actually connected and controlled via their own app itself. The app itself looks actually pretty polished. So it is not a very um, uh, unthoughtful kind of implementation. I do actually enjoy using this app quite a bit. So I guess that is really a good reason why this device is so popular on Amazon. Okay, so the update has already been completed and now there's a new firmware ready to use. Now you just click done and you will name the device. Uh, I will leave it as it is for now. And that's it. Okay, if you do want to use it just as a smart device, do note that there is a logo here, there is a mark here that says high res audio. Now, how high res exactly? Let me tell you, it reads here, supports up to 24 bits, 192 kilohertz of sampling. So a bit depth of 24 bits is pretty high. It's probably the, uh, one of the highest available right now. And 192 kilohertz of sampling is actually pretty high as well. Of course, there are sampling rates that are higher, but it, uh, I think beyond that, it really doesn't mean anything. So on the app itself, you'll see that it says Bit Perfect Audio Playback, all right? So this is what the device, this small little device is actually capable of. So if I were to go through the settings just a little bit, uh, I think I will bring something of interest to you. There's a setup icon. If you go inside the setup icon, you will notice one thing here. This is EQ. Now, look at this EQ panel. There are 10 bands of equalization. There are presets that you can select, all right? But otherwise, you can actually control all the EQ yourself by customizing it and controlling it. Now, this is very, very different from some of the other smart devices I've used. 10 bands of equalization, all right? And you can also go in and set, for example, here, audio output. You can select audio out. This is analog using the 3.5 mm output on the rear. And you can also use SPDIF, that is optical output. Now, you can also use Bluetooth. So this is what I, say, what I was saying. It can actually act as a Bluetooth transceiver. That means you are actually outputting music via Bluetooth from this device to another Bluetooth receiver, which could be your headphones, for example. All right, so there you go. And so one other thing is also under audio settings, you can have a fixed volume output, meaning to say if you are connected to a device like the Sonos 5s and you want to control the volume on this alone without having to fiddle with the uh, volume control on this at one stage and controlling that on another stage, you can actually do so and you can fix the volume output. The volume output level, you can set at two VRMS. Now, at two volts, this is probably the most powerful you can get. So I'll suggest that you leave it as that. And on the SPDIF, this is the output resolution. You can go crazy and select 192 kilohertz and 24 bits, but your external DAC must be able to support it. So there's a test audio that you can play to see whether your external deck is able to support that resolution or not. So for now, what we are trying to do is to set this up as a Bluetooth receiver. Now, how do we go about doing that? 
if I wanted to do Bluetooth pairing, what I need to do is to press and hold the volume plus and minus for two seconds. All right, so I'll just do this right here and the light will blink. You go to your phone, go to settings under Bluetooth, all right? And you will be able to see from the list of uh, devices, this will come up, all right? Click on it and you're connected, right? So there was a chime that was played. Now, from this moment onwards, whatever you're going to be playing on your phone will actually come out from the speaker. Now, the speaker itself, I've already set it up. I will step you through the uh, whole setup process to get the Sonos 5 set up for actual uh, sound reproduction via the line in jack. All right, so just a quick demo. Then that's fine. Okay, so that is actually the demonstration of Bluetooth connecting and playing sounds through the Sonos 5. So let's go into the Sonos app itself. This is the Sonos app. Now, if I click on the settings, okay, how do I access the settings right here? Okay, there are a couple of things that you need to set up before the Sonos 5 is able to accept this input. Now, if you go to the settings, go down all the way to this category called line in. Now, in the line in, you will see a couple of things. The source name is not important. Just choose audio component. And when you go to the source level, now there are a few settings all the way from level one to level 10, all right? And uh, the lower you choose, the softer the overall volume that is going to be coming out from the Sonos 5 speaker. So what I did was I select level 10, which is high. And the audio delay, I set it to low of 75 milliseconds. So when you set it to low of 75 milliseconds, what it does is it actually um, allows a better synchronization between audio and video. If you are playing video on your phone and you are trying to output the sound to the Sonos 5, so they will be more synchronized. If you choose a max of 2000 milliseconds, that's a two seconds delay lag. So the basically the lip synchronization will be way off. So it's not enjoyable in that particular case. But of course, 2000 will mean that it's a lot more stable. All right. And the most important part is autoplay here. Now, when you autoplay, you want to select the Studio 5. So this is the particular uh, speaker that we're looking at. You autoplay in that room when you have a 3.5 millimeter jack input uh, connected, right? So that when it's connected and you're playing something, the Sonos 5 will straight away play the volume. Now, uh, you can also do group rooms, okay? Or you can set the autoplay volume. Now, if you set the autoplay volume, meaning to say, every time it detects something coming in, it will start playing at that volume. Of course, you can control it thereafter. So when all this is set up, all right, you can be listening to anything, uh, but the moment you connect and stream via Bluetooth to this device, which is connected via the 3.5 mm jack, it will actually start to play sounds through the Sonos 5s. So in today's video, this is what I'm sharing with you. I do hope that you find it useful. If for any reason you need to get a Bluetooth receiver to enable your Sonos 5s or your, oh, well, actually just the Sonos 5s, then you are able to do it. Now, the other device that you can actually enable um, is the Sonos Ray. The Sonos Ray has a direct optical input, right? And it doesn't have a HDMI ARC input or EARC input, it uses optical. Now, this device right here, it actually has an optical input up, or rather optical output. So the optical output on this device will be able to connect to the Sonos Ray. So just imagine um, the Sonos Ray on its own is a soundbar. It can't accept Bluetooth, but if you do want to use it as a Bluetooth speaker, you are able to do the same with this particular device. So very interesting device, works with two of uh, Sonos, uh, very popular. One is a uh, Sonos 5, uh, which is a speaker sound system uh, for music. And the other being the Sonos Ray, which is a budget sound bar recently launched about two, three months back ago uh, from Sonos. So there you go. Today, I'm happy to bring you this device. If you have found this useful, do uh, leave a like on this video. Otherwise, I will see you in my next video.